Twenty-five years ago, Julian Mitchell's play, Another Country, opened in the West End. It created a sensation, inspired a film, and launched the careers of Kenneth Branagh, Rupert Everett, Daniel Day-Lewis and Colin Firth. Now, as part of Radio 4's betrayal season, we present the first ever radio production of this award-winning play. Set in a boys' public school in the 1930s, a school effectively run by the senior boys themselves, this is the story of two intelligent and rebellious students caught up in a battle against the school's oppressive elite, a battle that threatens the very foundations of the society in which they live and has a profound effect on the men they will become. Another Country by Julian Mitchell Someone's love never fault, as I see. Bennett, do get down those binoculars and pull yourself together. But will it pay the price? Anything. But what have you done with Lenin? Oh, there he is. Did you realise it would be sacrilege to lay Harcourt on Chapel altar? Charlie Chaplin will want a man to man talk with you. He can marry us if he likes, sanctify our passion. Bennett! I'm afraid he'd only tell you how men manage without women in the war. I bet he would. Don't encourage him, Judge. Oh, give me those binos. What's this? Three o'clock from Bushy Top Tree. Can it be? It is another Bushy Top Tree. Give those here. But he's not there. Not yet, but any moment now, the great oak door of Longford's will swing open on its rusty hinges. Oh, yeah, rusty. And the glorious vision will step forth. He'll stand a moment, winsomely framed in the tumescent archway, the sniffing the wind like a dappled deer. Oh, my God. And then, then, he'll shoot a tender yet burning, soft yet passionate glance across the 300 yards of sacred turf, hoping against hope that I'm here to receive it, and then I shall lay my heart at his feet. You must have enormous feet if they'll stretch from Longfords to here. You're so stupidly romantic. Why fall in love with the unattainable? There's more fun. Anyway, from what I hear, Harcourt not only is attainable, he's been attained several times already. Only by Longfords, man, surely. Not so far. Bennett, did you know you're becoming very, very boring about Harcourt? Am I, Devonish? I'm terribly sorry. I bore myself practically to extinction. I did so hope I might be mildly amusing to my friends. Well, you're not, so stop it. Can't. Sorry. One must have some spice to life in this dingy place. Anyway, I'm not nearly as boring as you were about Worsley. <laughs> you're both boring and incurably bourgeois and decadent. And you're all statistics and no heart. Oh, God, don't you encourage him. How many times do I have to explain? None, none. Communism is simply the logical result of people's feelings. Each other? God, you're hopeless. And you're only interested in bushels per acre in Siberia. Hectare. What? Per hectare, don't you listen to anything? And not Siberia. Oh, somewhere equally ghastly. Nowhere in the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics is ghastly. And Ooh. the moon is made of green cheese. Talk about stupidly romantic. Vision and reason go hand in hand with us. How charming. Like Jack and Jill, who would be first to tumble, I wonder? But you'll have to go, Bennett. And what a struggle you'll have, fighting back your tears as you send me off. Commissar Judd, salt mines will it be, or the firing squad? The people's court will decide. What now? My future under socialism. Oh, that. All punishments will be laid down in the appropriate chapter of the Soviet Penal Code. Don't you think it's riveting, Mingus, the way he reveals his class and upbringing? All those fathers and grandfathers in the Indian civil, carefully applying the rule book to the great unwashed... There's no connection. Bureaucracy, it's all just bureaucracy under different names. People bossing you about and collecting taxes. You know, underneath that anarchistic exterior... I'm not an anarchist. There lurks a spirit as rigidly administrative, as predatorily imperial as... Uh, as Cousins, Milner's. You're as foul at heart as fouler, Judd. Now... Look, I'm prepared to put up with most things, but that... Talking of foul We don't in here, if you don't mind. I think I should warn you, Bennett. He's taken great exception to the state of your uniform at the dedication. You were a bloody disgrace. It wasn't an inspection. You should respect the dead. You better buck up your ideas before Jacobot. There's no room for ideas in the court, Devonish. You're really going to have to smarten up on parade. Pull your socks up, generally. At least change them. They're not too bad, not more than a week old at <sighs> most. Who? I thought I should warn you. Well, thanks. <sighs> Listen to the authority behind the gentle hint. 
He's going to make a splendid head of house, don't you think? I was only letting him know. <laughs> yes, yes. Would you rather I didn't warn people about Fowler? Oh, no, no. Well, then. It's just I liked you so much more before you were a prefect. You'll like me again, I expect, when you're one yourself. Ha, ha. You're a fool, Judd. A complete idiot. Look, I can't be against the class system and be a prefect. Even you must be able to see that. A moron. A cretin. You're just looking forward to being in 22. Then what's wrong with that? 22 boys out of a school of over 400 electing each other to be demigods. It's democratic. Surely you approve of that. A self-perpetuating oligarchy of mutual congratulation is not democratic. Mutual what? At least 22 aren't appointed by the housemasters like ordinary prefects. Well, you've got to be someone. Do you want something here, Mingies? If not, I'm afraid I must remind you that prefects are not supposed to loiter in fourth-year library. <sighs> Where else can I see my friends? That's completely unnecessary, Judd. Have any of you seen Martin, eh? Class school wants him. You're hardly likely to find him in here till next term. Well, no one's seen him since the dedicate. Probably with his parents. Well, never mind. Have you looked at the Cicero yet, Bennett? It's filthy. Oh, good. Well, not filthy dirty, filthy difficult. Do you want the benefit of my insight during prep? Come to my study. Thanks. Oh, and thank you for the good-humoured restraint with which you exercise your power. I'm sure I speak for the whole house when I say how much we hope you'll be able to keep it up next term. I can but try. Try. <sighs> There's no need to be so offensive, Judd. You've got no manners whatever. You know what he was doing, Bennett, in the two minutes' silence? Judd, no. Laughing. I was not. I could see you out of the corner of my eye, skulking with the juniors and giggling. I didn't utter a sound. Then you were giggling silently. I couldn't concentrate on the dead at all. Judd. Not even a crusty old Tory like you, Devonish, must be able to see that it's absolutely ludicrous for 400 boys to line up and blub for a lot of people they never knew and who only died in a businessman's war because they were too damn stupid to shoot their superior officers and start a revolution like the Russians. But they were the superior officers, weren't they? We all know who you thought about. Well, naturally. <laughs> Unnaturally, you mean? All phenomena in nature are natural. You're both offensive. It's a beautiful memorial. And all those names, 342, think of it, they died for us. They died for their class. You are their class. And it's damn silly to pretend you're not, always trying to be different. Did they die for your wicked Uncle Vaughan too? Yes. It must be odd being a conchie, knowing people are dying for you and you refuse to die for them. It was clever of the head man to get him down the week after the dedica. <sighs> it certainly wasn't my idea. Are you ashamed of him? Yes. But he's so famous. I don't think I could be ashamed of anyone as famous as that. Well, he's all right. He's just so bloody obstinate, like Judd. I'm not a pinko, thanks very much. You shouldn't have laughed. I wanted to think about all those people and seeing you stopped me. I only wish I'd had the guts to laugh out loud. Be <sighs> kind. Our hero only wanted to shed a manly tear. There's nothing whatever to be ashamed of in weeping for the dead. If it's any comfort, the person I actually thought about was my father. But he only died when you were a junior. Yes. But gallantly. Oh, I'm awfully sorry. It was the Easter holes. I was reading in bed one night when I heard the most peculiar noise. A sort of muffled squeaking. I thought it was a cat at first. But it went on and on. Sort of feeble and desperate at the same time. Mm. Like something trapped. So I got up and looked out into the passage. It seemed to be coming from my parents' room, and there was a light under the door, so I assumed, well... Well, I mean, what would you have thought? Oh, gosh. I was just going back to bed to mind my own business and feeling pretty queasy because, well, I mean, one's own parents. Awful. When I quite distinctly heard my mater say, Help. Help. <gasps> then suddenly there it was again. Help. So I didn't know what to do. I went down the passage to their door. I listened a moment, then knocked, and said, Are you all right? And she said, Guy, quick, help! She sounded absolutely at her last gasp, so I turned the door handle to go in. Only, of course, the door's locked. Of course. Don't ever do it, Bennett. It's really good so It's far. true. Every word. I only wish it wasn't. Oh, did you break the door down? No. All the bedroom keys are the same in our house. I see why now. But it took me ages to push their key out backwards and get mine in. And then, when I finally got the door open... What? My pater had had a heart attack right in the middle of... No. Have you ever tried lifting your father's corpse off your living mother, Judd? <laughs> Not recently. It's incredibly difficult. 
It was like a huge sack of... of wet mud. The weight never went where I was expecting. And since he was, you know, still plugged in... No! No. Unfortunately, yes. Does it... I mean, does it stay... Rigor mortis. Oh, Bennett! My mother kept her eyes shut the whole time. And I suppose she thought if she couldn't see me, I couldn't see her. But of course I could. Oh, couldn't she have, well, wriggled out from under? Well, he was a very fleshy man. Uh... And they were in a rather complicated position. I think it's what did it. The mechanics were too much for him. There was a ghastly moment when I thought I might have to break one of his arms. Oh, how absolutely! What made it all the more macabre was I always hated him. He was a complete loather. Whereas my mother... I couldn't help thinking, it's all right for him. What better way to go? But for her, and me, seeing her, like it says in the Bible, uncovered... I honestly wondered if we'd ever be able to look at each other in the eye again. Oh. If you ask me, it's why she's marrying this awful colonel person. I don't follow. And protection. Distance. She feels naked again every time she sees me. How awful. Well, it is rather. Now can I applaud? At least I've seen a naked woman, which is more than you've done. <laughs> no, no one believes in you and your usherette. Well, you can believe what you like. Quite incidentally, I don't see what your father's conking out has to do with a two-minute silence. He was in the Navy in the war, torpedo officer on a destroyer. I always imagine him thinking about torpedoes as he died. Bennett, you're not... Ah! <laughs> Have any of you seen Martin, eh? No. No. Sure? Yes. The houseman wants him. What are you looking at, Bennett? The beauties of nature. Have you permission to use house binder? Yes. Who from? From whom, Fowler? From whom? Who from, Bennett? No wonder he never made it beyond the middle fifth. Farcical. Who? Farcical. If you mean Mr. Farquharson, kindly use his proper name. You didn't. What? Use his proper name. You call him the house man. He is the house man. I know that. Are you trying to be clever or something? I don't have to try. I am clever. Then what the hell are you talking about? Your habit of telling people to do one thing and then doing another yourself. Insolence to prefects is a beatable offence, Judd. Even if you are in the sixth form. Ah, as on sec of Gascoigne's fourth year library committee, Fowler, it's my pleasure to draw your attention to Rule 16 B, which states that all threats of corporal punishment are forbidden within the precincts of the library. When was that passed? Immediately after you so grossly abused Devonish the last time you burst in here uninvited. You can't make up rules just like that. Indeed not. Library is a democracy. Sixty-six and two-thirds of eligible votes are required for any rule change. This one, I'm pleased to tell you, was passed nem con. Which for those in the army class means unanimously. You're getting above yourself again, Bennett. My favourite position. Your uniform this morning was a disgrace. You thought it was a bloody disgrace, didn't you, Devonish? I've half a mind to ask Barclay for permission to beat you. Well, you've half a mind. We can all agree on that. Right, that's it. 16B, 16B. You needn't think you'll get away with this. Either of you. Shut the bloody door! <sighs> that man is absolutely beyond belief. If only he were. He's precisely what this school was designed to produce. What empire builders, dear me, no. Building empires needs imagination. Empire rulers. Oh, dry up. People like my own appalling forebears, since Bennett was so rude as to mention them. Licensed bullies. Fowler will go from the King's African Rifle straight into the Colonial Service. You wait and see. <laughs> He'll end up with an OBE. Will he retire to Bournemouth or Eastbourne? I think Bexhill on Sea for Fowler, where he'll die almost at once. Syphilis? Nostalgia for his natives. Oh, I did so hope he'd get syphilis. <gasps> Won't he ever have sex at all? Oh, there'll be a leathery wife for that. Will he tan her? He'll try it on the honeymoon, but she won't stand for it. Oh, God, how drab. Poor old colonies. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the colonial service. It's a perfectly decent career. There's nothing decent about colonialism. I don't see why you have to be so against everything. I'm not. I'm for revolution. <laughs> That's just silly. I see. Come and look at this. <sighs> Has an eagle descended on your Ganymede? Look at the doors of Chapel Dull Tower. They're carrying someone out. Good Lord. What, what is it? 
bell ringers must have had an accident. It can happen. The bell turns over or something and you get swept right off your feet. One of our tenants cracked his skull a few years ago ringing in the new year. I haven't heard any bells. Not since the Dedica. You know what I think? It's Martineau. But Martineau's not a bell ringer. God, I think you're right. But let me see. Oh, how very peculiar. Oh, God. Poor Martineau. From a bell rope? Yes. He must have been mad. Well, there'll have to be an inquest. The balance of his mind. But quite. Did he leave a note, Barclay? Farquharson says only the coroner need see it. Well, really. But it seems Mr Nicholson caught him in Photosock Dark Room yesterday evening with a man in Longford's. <sighs> oh, Lord. What man in Longford's? Robbins. I know Robbins. Silly bloody fools. What do they want to go and get caught for? What was Nickers doing in Dark Room anyway? I don't know. But he reported them both to the houseman last night, and they were supposed to go to the headman immediately after the dedica. Robbins turned up, but Martino. If you ask me, these things should be left to twenty two. Even the mighty twenty two can't sunker people, Delahaye. Who needs people sunkered? You wouldn't let them stay. Of course. After making them run the gamut with gym shoes for being so bloody stupid. Stupid! Letting themselves get caught. Delahaye, really? Yes, really, Fowler. Do we... do we know what it was they were actually doing? Need you ask? What possible difference could it make? Well, it was just, you, you know... Immorality is immorality, Mingies. If you ask me, it all comes of having masters who aren't old boys. I beg your pardon? An old boy would have had more sense than to go prowling round photosock dark room in the evenings. That's... that's absolutely... If ab you'd caught them, you'd have had to report them to me or Barclay, someone in 22. That's school practice. Men deal with men. Once masters get involved, it's fatal. Old boys know that. His parents are coming down tomorrow. Oh, Lord. Some of us will have to meet them. I'll go myself, of course. I don't know if any of you... In that case, Delahaye, you'll have to come. What on earth can I say? I don't know uh, how good he was at Rugger. But he wasn't. I... I didn't know him very well myself. Did any of you? Who were his friends? I don't think he had any special friends. <sighs> the problem is, the tone of the house has simply gone to pieces. Fowler! And Delahaye is one of the people mainly responsible. You've always acted as though school and house rules don't apply to you. Well? What kind of example is that? Captain of Games, a member of 22, swanking about and openly breaking the rules. The juniors imitate you, don't you realise? Fowler! And you do nothing to stop him. He's been a bad influence on the house from the day he arrived. I'll be a bad influence on you in a moment. And things have got so slack. It was something to be in Gascoigne's once. Now, now... This is hardly the time or place to go into all that, if you don't mind. Not when things have got so bad, a man has been caught with a man in another house and then hanged himself. You know perfectly well how we spent our first two years here, Fowler. How much beating and bullying there was. At least it stopped us indulging in immorality. Don't be so bloody pie, for God's sake. Well, Delahaye accepted, of course. He always is. Please. If I'm responsible, then I'm responsible. But I made a vow at the end of my first term. If ever I became head of house, I'd do my utmost to see that no one ever had to creep about in fear and terror the way we did. And now we see the result. I don't see any connection between Barclay's liberal regime and Martineau's suicide. Really, I don't. Thank you. Then things can only go from bad to worse here next year. Till there's no one left alive, you mean? You're so stupid, Fowler. If Nickers hadn't broken school practice, Martineau would still be here. He'd have a very sore bum, but he'd still be here. Oh, you are so corrupt, so cynical. That's enough. The question isn't why it happened, but what we do now. I'm sure we can all agree at least that we don't want what happened in Warburton's happening here. No, no not. Warburton's has done jolly well since they had that clear out. Mass sunkering, general hysteria, cues to confess to the house man. Are you mad? It might be just the thing for the house in its present state. If I may put a selfish point of view, I should like there still to be a house next year. I'm sure it's not nearly on that scale. Anyway, wouldn't you rather start with a clean house?
Frankly, I doubt if such a thing as a clean house exists in this school or any other. Then you're as hopeless as the others. I have to consider next term, Fowler. That's why I'd like hysteria kept to an absolute minimum and all bean spilling kept as far away from farcical as possible. Well, he'll want to be kept out of it anyway. God, he hates even talking about it. And if people start getting hysterical and rushing off behind the green bay's door, that'll be it. Really, Mingies? What about a voluntary knees down? Don't be balmy. Look, at times like this, people go religious and want to confess. Well, I think God's a much better person to hear their confessions than the house man. Apart from anything else, the confessions are silent. All it needs is a few prayers, a lot of pie jaw, some long pauses for thought, and a couple of cheerful hymns at the end. Mm, well, can't we keep religion out of it? I mean, chapel bell rope. Of course we can't. Who take it? You, Barclay? I don't know. You and Fowler. What? Well, you're awfully good at this sort of thing. You know you are. But I don't know if I approve. I thought you always approved of everything pie. Uh, think of the house's reputation, for heaven's sake. That's precisely what I am thinking about. If there's a general scandal, it won't just be all over the school, it'll be all over England. People won't exactly be enthusiastic when we say we were in Gascoigne's. It won't get that far. It will, you know. Everyone knows everything. Everyone who counts. My pater won't have anyone from Harrow in the firm because of what he's heard. Perhaps if the knees down were compulsory... I'm afraid the sixth wouldn't come. Damn the sixth! Make them Besides, come! Besides, there are new men and juniors who won't know what it's all about. You do have a knack for this sort of thing. Well, I'm not very happy about it. But if the reputation of the house is really at stake... I think it is. All right, then. After prep? Thank you. Yes, thank you, Fowler. Bags, I do dorms. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and After you, Walter. <laughs> I said after you. You really must learn that whatever anyone else does in this horrible place, when I say something, I mean it. Sorry, Judd. What for? I... I don't know. Sorry. Stop saying sorry. One reason the proletariat is so exploited, Wharton, is its fatal fatalism. The way it expects the worst. Yes, Judge. So don't connive at your own oppression. Don't assume that just because you're a fag, you must be in the wrong. Resist the tradition. Oh, give me that jug. Thank you, Judd. From those with the greatest means to those with the greatest need. Yes, Judd. Yes, because you understand what I'm saying and agree with it? Or because I'm a fourth year and you're a first? Um, I, I'd like to get on a mush now, if you don't mind. <laughs> Hopeless. God, it's all quiet on the Western Front tonight, all right? The whole house gone to the knees down. Mm, practically. God, they cleared Martineau's stuff up pretty quick, didn't they? Was he blubbing a lot last night? No sign anything was wrong at all. Poor sod. Still... It's a cad's trick, suicide. Just leaves everyone feeling awful and knowing it's too late to do anything about it. They can see it never happens again. Yeah, easier said than done. In a properly ordered society, it wouldn't happen at all. Drivel. People will always go mad. It's not madness, it's sense. A response to the intolerable strains of capitalist society. Oh, I suppose in Russia, no one ever kills himself. Statistics show far fewer suicides take place than before the revolution, for the obvious reason that there are far fewer social and economic contradictions, and so far less strain. <laughs> are you trying to tell me Martineau was suffering from social and economic contradictions? Of course, this whole place is based on contradictions. It's a complex network of irreconcilable values. The only surprising thing is how few suicides there are. If you hate it so much, why don't you leave? Because, till I get my scholarship to Cambridge, I'm in economic servitude to my parents, like everyone else. Run away. Get yourself a job. Then how would I get my scholarship? It's difficult enough trying to work here. Farcical tries to stop me at every opportunity. God, you're ungrateful. He let you oil out of the core. The core is supposed to be voluntary. I suppose. And he won't let me off games. I should hope not. Games are good for Bolshies. Teach you a bit of... Team spirit. Cricket's three afternoons a week. You, you could be quite good, if you'd only try. I'd rather work. People won't let me. I don't interfere with them. Why do they have to interfere with me? 
You Barclay confiscated another torch last night. Well, you will be so bloody obvious. When you hear someone coming, you should turn the damn thing off. I was too absorbed in my book. Mm. Dash capital. <laughs> Serves you bloody well right. You don't actually believe in rules, do you? What? You think they're only there to be seen to be obeyed? It depends who you are. If you can ride them, ride them. If not, watch out. What a hypocrite you are. <sighs> Martin wasn't a hypocrite, that's why he did it. This ghastly school persuaded him its footling, meaningless rules actually stood for something real. <sighs> Moral principles, rules of life. Jack, have you seen Spongebob? No. Oh, God, where the hell is he? At the knees down. Oh. And what the hell are you doing out of your dorm without permission? Looking for you to ask permission to visit this one. What do you want with Spongebob, anyway? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, Bennett, no. What do you mean? Is there no depth to which you won't sink? I don't think so. You're sure that's where he is? Positive. He hasn't been behind the Green Bay's door? No. No one's been. Stop being so windy. Thank God. Of course. Nothing to stop people going to Farsicle after the knees down. Oh. Don't be cruel to dumb animals, Judd. Is it quiet up there? As the grave. Better go and see, I suppose. really been having sponging, have you? Shh! He's got such awful shag spots. Shh! No, I haven't. <laughs> well, he do have some taste, then. If you really want to know, he repulsed my advances. I didn't know you ever had failures. You want a swig? Thanks. Except with me, of course. <laughs> Everyone gives in in the end. It's Bennett's law. You just have to put the idea in their heads and give it time to grow. People get bored with frigging and lonely. They long for company. Like my mother. Well, it makes me sick, her marrying that oaf. And don't turn up for the wedding. And miss all that champagne. Anyway, she's dreadfully upset. We're very close, you know. The parting's bound to be very painful. <laughs> Won't you be gaining a father rather than losing a mother? Thank God, I hope not. One was enough. Was any of that true, by the way? About your real father? <laughs> bits. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. Devonish is such a fool. He believes anything you tell him. Well, I think you should follow your mother's example. Distance yourself from the relationship with a member of the opposite sex. Is it really so different? How would I know? I've only ever had girls. Oh, come on. I discovered I liked girls when I was 11. The male body has never attracted me in the slightest. It might, if you let it. <laughs> you ought to try everything once, you know. I wouldn't mind having every girl in the world once. I'm serious. So am I. You should try girls. I have done. I mean, tried, I mean. I say, you are making progress with Karl Marx. <laughs> I'd have finished by now if I was only allowed to work. I thought it was supposed to be so terribly difficult. I haven't found anything I couldn't understand eventually. If they taught us any economics here instead of Tudors and bloody Stuarts, Marx should be a set book for the sixth. They shouldn't leave us to fight our way through it on our own and under the blankets. <sighs> I lost another torch last night. How many is that? Twelve. Twelve torches? If you weren't so bolshy, you could read as much as you like. You'd uh, be a prefect by now. You'd probably be head of house next term instead of Mingus. I keep telling my parents, if only I was at home, I could get in three more hours a day. But of course they won't listen. School keeps me out of the way, and that's all they care about. God, if our parents knew what actually went on here... They do know. The father's, anyway. This awful colonel of my mother's says public schools go on too long. They shouldn't go on at all. He says we should leave when we're 17 and take a job for a year or two. Go around the world, learn a bit about life before you go up to the varsity. Why not the army, I said. One learns so much about life in the army, killing people. <laughs> <laughs> for a moment, he almost liked me. Barclay wants me to go and meet Martineau's parents. You? We used to meet in the holidays sometimes, at parties and things. Will you go? Do you think I should? How much did you really like him? Well, I didn't mind him, I suppose. Actually, I... Oh, Bennett. Not him, too. No, no. The thing is, I don't know what I might not say. And you'd better not go. On the other hand, if they'd like it... It wouldn't really be hypocrisy, would it? Yes. 
My mother liked it when people wrote her about my father. My dear Bennett, whenever people say something wouldn't really be hypocrisy, or lying, or cheating, it means they're half gone already. Half gone where? If you practice hypocrisy without admitting it, you end up not remembering what's true and what isn't, what's right and what's wrong, and if you forget that, well, you've had it as a human being, haven't you? Have I? Almost everyone in this country has forgotten. They literally don't know how to be honest, decent, truthful, ordinarily human and good. That's why there has to be a revolution. No, not that again. Oh. Bennett, go to bed before your lovely mind is as corrupted as your filthy body. All right. You really think I shouldn't go, then? Up to you. Well, I'm glad I'm not Robbins, anyway. What? They'll toss him on the funeral pile, won't they? For God's sake. Of course, they'll have to <laughs> chop the offending member off first. That's not funny. Oh, don't you think so? Good night, Judd. Good night. John. <sighs> yes, Wharton. Oh. Whatever's the matter? I want my mother. Oh, dear. <laughs> Come on. What is it? It's... It's, it's Martineau. What about him? He was always very nice to me. Was he? And now... Now he's... Shh. There, there. There, there. He said... He said I wasn't to worry my first day. He said it was awful for everyone, always. I hadn't been to a prepper, you see. Not the boarding one. He said, he said it would soon get better. And did it? Oh, yes. Yes. Well, that was very nice of him. <laughs> I was wanting to die when he said that. I thought I wasn't going to be able to bear it. Not possibly. And then he went on. <laughs> and we all want to die sometimes. It's because... Well, other people have power over us which they have no right to. <laughs> power to make us miserable. To stop us being ourselves. Right, into bed now. What you have to do when they make us feel like that is to say to yourself, they've no right. No right at all. I'm me. I won't be what they want me to be. And you keep on saying it till you're really angry. Yes, Judd. They can beat our bottoms till they're purple and blue, but if we keep our anger up, they'll never get us. They'll never get our souls. They'll never succeed in making us really want to die. Thank you, Judd. Now, snuggle down, I'll tuck you up. There. Good night, Wharton. You were fouler. Shh. What on earth are you doing? Celebrating. I thought we didn't have to be back till tomorrow morning. Oh, that drain pipe was a bloody disgrace. Someone should have a word with farcical. Oh. Where on earth did you get that waistcoat? It's my father's. I thought my mother should have a reminder of her sordid past at her second wedding. Tommy. May I call you Tommy? Tommy? If you want. Tommy, I'm in love. <laughs> That's not exactly news. I don't mean in love. I mean in love. You're drunk. It's like being drunk. Only instead of things going round and round, they're perfectly, beautifully still. And not blurred, sharp, clear, brighter colours than you've ever seen. It's, it's unbelievable. The wedding was a success then. It wasn't a wedding. More an engagement party. What? I oh, you, you mean going... the wedding? Well, that was ghastly. Mother blubbed and Arthur... He wants me to call him Arthur. Can you believe it? Perhaps it's his name. I told her, you can call him anything you like. He's your husband. I shall call him Colonel and that's that. Shh. Leaving me to rot in this jail of a school while she flaunts herself up and down the Riviera with, with that... that... Shh! Sorry! I mean, really. 
It's so undignified, people that age, going off to Cap Ferrar. They should creep down to Cromer and think themselves lucky. Tweeds and plus fours, and out on the links all day. That's what they should be doing. I told them so. Made Mother Blub again. Cat. They're trying to get rid of me, Tommy. They've got a world tour all set up. Cape Town, Singapore, Hong Kong, Australia, I ask oh, you. really? It's this Marsloe business. They fear for my moral character. It's a bit late for that, isn't it? Well, you must be mad, I said. I'm not leaving now. School's just getting to the good bit. I didn't know there was a good bit. Oh, well, for you, there isn't. You're determined not to have one. But for sensible people, me... Nothing will be as good again till I'm ambassador in Paris. God, childish. Life is ladders, that's all. Prepper to here, first one to sixth, second assistant junior undersecretary to ambassador in Paris. Sir Guy Bennett, GCMG, GCVO, Knight of Grace of St. John of Jerusalem, chain of the most exalted order of the Queen of Sheba. Contemptible <laughs> sycophant in the service of the bourgeoisie. What? Contemptible sycophant in the service of the bourgeoisie. It's what Lenin called the renegade Karl Kautsky. Did he indeed? Because he substituted eclecticism and sophistry for dialectics. Well, that is bad, of course. And wholly failed to see that personal opportunism always and inevitably leads to subservience to the ruling class. Ah, but what Lenin wholly failed to see was I shall be the ruling class. Oh, yes? <sighs> Groveling about to kings and queens, walking backwards and kissing hands... <laughs> Lenin understood all right. You're utterly imbued with the spirit of civility. You mean he wouldn't have liked me? No. What about James? Who's James? Harcourt. <sighs> His name's James. But frankly, I don't think he'd have cared much for the pair of you. Well, I'm not mad about him either. Lenin, I mean. James. Oh, when I got back from the wedding, I took James to dinner at the Fox and Hounds. You're mad. We arranged it all yesterday. My mother was marrying Arthur. I didn't see why I shouldn't have dinner with James. My God, he really did go. You know, till now, it's all just been a game. Manoeuvring for glances, meeting accidentally on purpose. But now... we sunk his... No, no. Master's drink at the Fox and Hounds. it? you are mad. Do call me Guy. So stupid, sir. <gasps> oh, Tommy... Amor vincit omnia. You're hopeless. A totally hopeless case. Don't worry about me. I shan't disturb you. I'm asleep already. First they take away my torches. And then when I take my life, or at least my bum in my hands, and creep down here, they send me you. This place is impossible. Good night. Good night. Who stole my heart away? Who made me I'm leaving you the most frightful mess, I'm afraid, Mings. That's all right. I've just discovered something awful. Farcical's thinking of asking Fowler to stay on a term to be head of house. Barkley? But he can't. Well, it's all to do with next year's prefects. What about them? Devonish may be leaving at the end of this term. Oh, since when? Since Martineau. Where do I get my fourth prefect? Exactly. The excuse is, if he's going to be a farmer, or manage the estate, or whatever, he might as well go to agricultural college straight away. But actually, his parents take a very dim view of what's been going on here, and they're hopping mad about his bloody uncle being invited down. Oh, no. It couldn't be worse timing. He's the ripest of fruit, apparently. Anyway, the net result is, you're going to be a prefect short, unless you can get Judd to take a more responsible attitude. Oh, fat chance. Hmm. If Farskull tries to put Fowler in above me, I'll refuse to be a prefect. You could certainly try that. He can't possibly afford to have two senior men who aren't prefects. It's all right about Judd. He's a school joke, but... A lot of the juniors admire Judd, actually. Well, that's another problem I've left you. I am sorry, Jim. As far as I can see, I've been a total failure. Oh, nonsense. I've been thinking, perhaps I shouldn't wait until the end of term, but leave now, before I do any more damage. Oh, don't be ridiculous. I can't get Martin out of my head. 
I've never even been up Chapel Tower. But I can't sleep. Every time I close my eyes, I see him hanging there. I'm beginning to think I shall never get him out of my mind. It wasn't your fault. Really, it wasn't. <sighs> I don't know. Perhaps it would do the house good to have a purge. I'm certainly not immaculate. Are you? I don't think it's something people should talk about. Well, perhaps I am more contaminated than others. I doubt it very much. <sighs> I can't wait for term to be over. And I was looking forward to it so much. You did cut it, of course. But the headman told us to do an appraisers. I don't have to hear Vaughan Cunningham to be able to appraise him right down to his little liberal slippers. Oh, it's damn good. Oh, the post-war crisis in art and life. Collapse of faith in public values. Nothing left but to trust in personal relations. Avoid politics at all costs. There's much more to it than that. Oh, yes. Damn the old, damn the poor, damn the unemployed. The children with rickets. The miners coughing their lungs up. Oh, and please don't mention the boring old means test to me. I'm a writer. That's stupid. What he said was... It is the act of the civilised man in a time of public turmoil to turn to the private life. What I recommend is letter writing. Pull up a cosy chaise long and settle down with a pen and paper to the composition of a minor masterpiece full of spice and semicolons and some little insights between dashes to one of the dearest of one's dear, dear friends. Though I do recommend keeping a copy oneself just in case. <laughs> it would be too sad if posterity were to be denied the shallow, smelly, sentimental, morally putrid contents of the Victorian wickerwork waste paper basket one is pleased, nay delighted, to call one's mind. Oh, Shut up. Oh, Lord, hasn't he started even? Who? Walton. Started what? Laying. Devonish is bringing his uncle to tea with you. What? Farcical's instructions. Bring him here. Even here. I'm working. Then you must stop. God almighty. If you play your cards right, he may put you in his weekly column. <sighs> the public school communist is a sign of the times. <laughs> must be worth a paragraph at least. Shall we tidy up a bit? No, I'm working. All work and no play make Tommy Judd I want to be dull, can't you understand? Revolution is made by dull people doing dull things with tremendous thoroughness and discipline. But once the revolution comes, they're heroes of the people. Not to say commissars. Oh. You couldn't be dull if you tried. Boring, but not dull. Oh, thanks a lot. Don't you bore yourself sometimes being the prophet in the wilderness? It's only one more term... I want to talk to you about that, actually. The answer is no. I wish you'd reconsider. I wish you'd let me work. Savonarola Judd, the scourge of the school. Oh. You must feel pretty isolated. I've never felt anything but lonely since the day I came here. Same faces day after day and year after year. And none I ever want to see again. You'll be even more isolated next term. You're also going to make life jolly awkward for the rest of us. Well, hard cheese. Look, I won't ask you to do anything you don't want to. You only have to go through the motions, prep duty, dorms, roll call, nothing, really. Mingies, have you the makings of a politician in you? I'm really speaking as one friend to another. You have? Well, well. What would Vaughan Cunningham say? Personal relations poisoned by political ambition. Damn Vaughan Cunningham. I want you to be one of my prefects. Your prefects? How very proprietary. Oh, Wharton, good. And what do you want? Um, to lay, please. Well, you can't. Judd, I'm on sec of library. No one informed me officially about this. Team. Come on. I wasn't even consulted. I couldn't find you to consult you. Anyway, it's Farcicle's orders. Oh, please, Judd. Oh, for God's sake, do what you're bloody well like. Just don't disturb me. I'm working. Thank you, Judd. <sighs> I say, cucumber sandwiches. How posh. Oh, Judd, please. They're meant to be eaten, aren't they? Oh, but they're all arranged. I'll eat another one, then, to balance. There. No one will notice. Oh, Judd. <laughs> I'm sorry, Warden, but being angry makes me hungry. So now the old lecture gets a chance to corrupt our bodies as well as our minds. There's to be no corruption, that's why I'm here. 
Come on, Watson. No, you won't be able to stop him. One glance at our fresh pink faces and his palsied hands will scurry to our fresh pink... Chard. Knees, mingies, knees. Watch out for your cartilages. Some of these old crabs can give a fearful nip. Excuse me, Judd. Yes? Shall I make the tea now, or wait? Make it now. But it may get cold. Then wait. But, but then it might not have time to brew. No one will notice. We'll be far too busy being impressed. You think I should wait, then, <laughs> or not? I think you should do whatever's most likely to make you least anxious. Oh, but then I Wait, would... Watson. Thank you, Mingies. And whatever you do, when you grow up, don't go in for catering. Of course I won't. We've been in timber since 1773. <laughs> <laughs> Poor child. Do you know he talks in his sleep? What is his dog about all night long? Come here. Sit. Fetch. Stop it. Good dog. <laughs> And all day long, he is the wretched dog. He's so anxious to please, he's practically wetting himself. Not to give displeasure, rather. When I follow the Barclay line, the less anxiety, the better. Oh, yes, you're a good, mild moderate. Given a proper education with some real people, you might have turned out quite a useful member of society. <laughs> Thanks. Too late now, though. You'll have to go. By the time you've finished, will there be anyone left? The whole country will be left. Dear me. Uh... Pay no attention. That's Judd, Uncle Vaughan, our tame communist. Not too tame, I trust. And this is Mingis. He's a prefect, but we let him in here sometimes, as he's not too bad. How do you do, Mingis? How do you do, sir? So, this is where you fellows sit, is it? That's where we work, between interruptions. Judd? Oh, but aren't all interruptions welcome? They are with me. Ignore him. He's always like that. Are you? Brusque and uncompromising. How splendid. He'd work 16 hours a day if we let him. We have to stop him for his own good. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. When people claim to be doing things for other people's good, it always means their own. Are you working for a scholarship, Judd? When I'm allowed to. Oxford or Cambridge? Cambridge. Well, it always was one for the Puritans. <laughs> Take that, Judd. But it was. All those tiresome people who made life difficult for Queen Elizabeth. Nothing seems to have changed. I have a nephew at King's. Which college are you going to? Trinity. Well, he's rather too social for you, I think, and you're certainly too socialist for him. <laughs> he says everything's drearily political these days. No fun at all. No. When I was up, it was all G.E. Moore. The pleasures of human intercourse and the enjoyment of beautiful objects. Some of us said, why not combine the two and enjoy the pleasures of intercourse with beautiful human objects? <laughs> But that was before the war, of course, when it was still all right to make jokes. Flippancy is very much frowned on now, one hears. <laughs> Come in. Um, the, the tea. Oh, thanks, Warden. <clears throat> Shall I bring the muffins now, Judd? Well, don't ask me. It's not my party. Yes, please. Did he say muffins? How wonderful. And look at all those sandwiches. You certainly do yourselves well. I hope no one missed my lecture to prepare them. Naturally. How very kind. It wasn't kind, he was told to. Well, how kind of someone to tell him, and how kind of him to obey. And who is this? I'm sorry, I'm late, sir. Bennett. Guy Bennett. I was arguing with some people about your lecture. I couldn't get away. I thought what you said. I thought it was absolutely illuminating. Thank you. One likes to think one raises the blinds a little, lets in a chink. A little ray. Let's sit, shall we? Uh, Uncle Vaughan, you sit there. A little toady. <clears throat> Shut up, Jack, and sit. Thank you. <sighs> One remembers so well mm. how dark and dreary adolescence is. Confusion of mind worse confounded by utter confusion of body. Even one's voice suddenly betrays one. One's passions are so random and unreliable. Cricket scores one minute, Swinburne the next. I don't suppose any of you read Swinburne. I'm afraid not, sir. Not a set book. A oh, curious little man, Swinburne. A gnome. Wonderful red hair. But the head, too big for the body. The sordid truth will come out eventually, I suppose. And what sordid truth is that, sir? He never got over being swished at Eton. Obsessed with it all his life. Harold Nicholson tries to make out it's all exaggerated, but it's not. Not at all. I've seen some of the letters, and I can tell you. Hot stuff. Why would Mr Nicholson want to conceal it, sir? Oh, ambition, wouldn't you think? One doesn't get on in the Foreign Office by publishing dirt about eminent men of letters. Mild scandal, yes, but not dirt. I'm going into the FA. Are you? 
Well, it's an excellent way of seeing the world, if you can stand all the ghastly dinners with the other diplomats. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. Is there much swishing here these days? Ceaseless. Practically none, sir. I must say, one doesn't recall it as nearly so stimulating as Swinburne says. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking of doing away with it in this house altogether. Well, I'm head of house next time, you see. Well done. Oh, what's this? As an experiment. <laughs> well, well, well. Uh, we must talk about it. I shall have to have the cooperation of my prefects, of course. Oh, you've got mine already. Look here, you can't just spring it on us out of the blue like this. It's not the time or place. Donald, don't tell me you support the beating of little boys' bums. I'm not sure. I don't see any point in change for change's sake. But this would be for the sake of the bums. I think there's rather more to it than that, sir. It's not just the pain given. There's also the pleasure of the one doing the beating. Really? I had no idea. Mingies, you've been opening books again. You mustn't do it. We'll start thinking, and then where will we be? If all that stuff's true... Of course it is. Haven't you ever seen Fowler's... Fowler's what? Fowler's a prefix, sir. He gets excited when he's beating someone. Dear me, uncontrollably sometimes. Bennett, do you mind? Yes, I'm sure Mr Cunningham isn't interested in... Oh, but I am. I'm riveted. I shall write an article. <laughs> Don't you dare! Oh, I won't mention the school by name. Of course, some schools have abolished it already. <laughs> Only ludicrous places like Boodales and Dartington Hall. It's all rot. Beating's all right so long as there aren't bullies. But there always are. I thought communists were all for discipline. Discipline, yes. Barbarism, no. Well, since you're not going to be a prefect, what you think makes no difference, luckily. Oh, dear. Have you offended authority with your revolutionary views? I refuse to collaborate with a system of repression. Splendid. I am impressed. You're meant to be. <laughs> you're so corrupt, you can't believe anyone could actually do something on principle, can you? Are you, Donald? I know showing off when I see it. Judd doesn't realise he's here to learn, not teach. Well, you'll never learn. Not if they put you in front of a firing squad. Oh, dear. Is there no hope for him at all? If people align themselves with the forces of progress, well and good. If they don't, history will take care of them. History? Does the individual count for nothing, then? Very little. Though the object of the revolution is, of course, to increase the general level of human happiness. Will it increase mine, do you think? If you let it. If you persist in your cult of bourgeois individualism, your middle-class selfishness and egotism, obviously not. How very severe. So people like me are to be crushed beneath your chariot wheels, are they? We shall have tanks. You know, I hate to say this, but you sound just like the people who sent me white feathers in the war. Oh, did they really, sir? Oh, Lord, don't let's go into that. Why not? Donald's father was so ashamed of me, he wouldn't even let me labour on his land. I had to go and labour in Monmouthshire. I must say, sir, it's hard to think of you as a horny-handed son of toil. I'm glad the whiff of the bullpen no longer trails about me. Sometimes I think it does. I have to go and have a bath. I'm sure there's some doleful Freudian explanation. Something unmentionable to do with my potty, I expect. You all read Freud, I suppose? No, no. <laughs> We're not allowed stuff like that. Not even under the blankets. Oh, fat chance. Well, perhaps it's as well. He's as depressing as Karl Marx. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? More depressing, really. One can at least struggle against historical forces. One can lie down in front of the juggernaut, as it were, and try to slow its progress. Ah, you do recognise that it is progress, then? But one can't lie down in front of one's subconscious. One can't even find it to lie down in front of. And if that really controls everything we do, well, I call it a very gloomy view. One likes to think one has some control over one's life. For instance, I'd like another cup of tea, please, Donald. Oh, sorry. Thank you, dear boy. I can't bear to think it's either history or my subconscious that's making me thirsty, any more than I can bear to think I spent two subaqueous years uphill and down dale in Monmouthshire simply at the whim of my id, or the forces of progress, do you call them? Yes. You see, I thought there was a moral principle involved. Thank you. I thought it was wrong to kill. An eccentric view in a Christian society, of course. But I believe one must obey one's moral intuitions, however eccentric, and however awkward the consequences. It's those intuitions that separate us from the animals. Don't you think? Yes, of course. You say, of course. But Judd doesn't think so. Nor does Freud. They say moral intuitions are all nonsense. And so did the people who sent me feathers. So what's the connection? You none of you allow any room for doubt. For me, doubt is the basis of all moral life. 
If you take away doubt and claim absolute authority, whatever name you give it, you diminish the humanity of man. You diminish mankind. But you had no doubt you were right to be a conscientious objector. I had ceaseless doubts. I was always open to argument. Indeed, I had to be. The local labourers took a very poor view of me. But there's no argument with history, is there? No. And that doesn't worry you? Well, why should it? It's a fact. Oh, dear. You'd have looked pretty silly if the Germans had invaded. Oh, Donald. You're such a chip off the old block. <laughs> <laughs> Sir. Dear boy. There was something in your lecture you said. Nothing in the world was certain except our feelings, the intuitions and so on. Yes. But feelings change. Mine do all the time. Yes, indeed. Then, well, how do you hold on to anything? Why should you want to? But you must have something. Why? Well, it's all chaos otherwise. Yes. But every moment some form grows perfect in hand or face... Mm. Some tone on the hills or the sea is choicer than the rest. Some mood or passion or insight or intellectual excitement is irresistibly real and attractive to us. For that moment only. You know your Pater, I hope. He's dead. Walter Pater, the Renaissance. Mm -hmm. Not the fruit of experience, but experience itself is the end. Oh, you must read it, you really must. He says the purpose of life is to be always at the place where the greatest number of vital forces unite in their purest energy. To burn always with this hard, gem-like flame. To maintain this ecstasy is success in life. That's wonderful. Is it right if I go and be sick now? Oh, Judd! I'm awfully sorry, sir. He... Oh, but it's the greatest compliment I've been paid in years. To annoy someone so much, he leaves the room. I must read, Pater, to burn ever... Always. To burn always with this hard, gem-like flame. Of course, Judd thinks history will snuff out our little flames like that. But I think I'd rather be snuffed out while ecstatic than gutter down quietly in slavish obedience to its dictates. <laughs> well, that's very fine and large, but in my... Uh, oh dear, what does that mean? Only that I have to go and take roll call. If you'll excuse me, sir, I'll answer for you too. Thanks. Thanks. It's been fascinating listening to you, sir. Really fascinating. Oh, the pleasure's been all mine. It's not often I have the chance to show off to such a charming and attentive audience. Oh. <clears throat> Donald, is it time I went? The taxi will be here in five minutes, Uncle Vaughan. Oh, my hat. Where did I put my hat? You must have left it with the houseman. Mr. Farcicle, is that what you call it? Among other things. And Donald, he did bristle at me, so I don't think I can face him again. He bristles because he wasn't in the war and he thinks he should have been. I certainly got the impression he thought I should have been. Donald, be a dear and rescue it. All right. Shan't be a minute. Oh, such a... Such a very... Is Donald quite as bluff and straightforward as he seems? Oh, yes, sir. He's got a perfectly good brain, actually, but he doesn't think it gentlemanly to use it. Oh. Bachelors always have such high hopes of their nephews and nieces. You're not afraid to use your brain, anyway. Uh, no, sir. It's a pity you're not staying longer. Oh. Oh. We could have had dinner and gone on talking. <laughs> I could have gone on showing off, you mean. Though you young people have a good deal more to show than me. I don't mind exhibiting myself. Really? Oh, perhaps we could continue our conversation some other time. I should love that, sir. And we do have holidays. So you do. Where do you live? Epping, just on the edge of the forest. I don't know Epping, but here's my card. If you ever come up to town... Thank you, sir. Telephone first, won't you? One never knows when one's going to be free. Of course, sir. My dear boys, no need to call me sir. I've one or two friends might amuse you. Oh, that would be... M May I bring a friend? One of these? No, someone else, someone special. By all means. Judd wouldn't like to come, would he? I'm afraid not. Pity. That sort of frankness is so attractive, so manly. I'm afraid his interests lie elsewhere. Who's lie where? Uh, Judd's. I was telling Mr Cunningham how Judd thinks literature is bosh and we all ought to do economics. Oh, 
Judd, come on, Uncle Vaughan, the taxi's early. There's enough time for you to buy me a drink on the way to the station. Oh, dear. There's only one thing you young men can think of. Goodbye, Bennett. Goodbye, sir. Come on, then, Donald. What do you want, Walton? I've come to clear. Well, carry on, then. Hey, what are you doing with those sandwiches? Those are fags' perks. Fags don't have perks after library tea, Walton. Bennett! Here, have these and think yourself lucky. But there's the charwalla and the slices and butterings. Tell them Mr Cunningham mate everything up. That's not fair. Too bad. Where are those binos? I'll tell me it. Walton, if you're going to clear, clear. <sighs> if you carry on banging plates like that, I'll bang your head. Oh, my God. What? It's him. Who? Oh, God, I can't look. Are you all right, Bennett? I will be in a moment. Shall I get Matron? It was his smile. It made me dizzy. It's slightly off-centre, you know. Everything beautiful is slightly lopsided. There's a little hollow at the base of his throat, which makes me want to pour honey all over him and lick it off again. Bennett! Hello? Walton, why isn't this table cleared? Mingus, Bennett's taken Fag's perks. Is that any reason not to clear the table? But it's not fair. They're ours. It's house practice. Bennett, what have you done with Walton's perks? Earth hath not anything to show more fair. Nothing at all. Give those binos here. What have you got in your pockets? Oh, for God's sake. Here, now give me those binos Certainly back. Certainly not. They're all squashed. Mingus, will you please give me those binos? I'm confiscating them. What the hell are you talking well, about? I've got fluff on them. Walton, if this table is not cleared in one minute, you'll be up before Barclay for six strokes. Yes, Mingus. And I thought you were supposed to be against corporal punishment. Hurry up, Walton. Thank you, Mingus. Have you completely lost your mind? Yes, actually. After all that's happened, you talk like that in front of a junior? He doesn't understand. Of course he does. You don't understand either. I'm in love, Jim. Oh, don't talk such utter piffle. And taking fags, Perks, that's a <laughs> filthy trick. It's not funny. You'd better take a pull on yourself. I'd rather do it with you. Oh, for God's sake, will you stop it? I'm warning you, Guy. You carry on like this and I'll be looking for someone else to be my number two. You don't know what's going on. Devonish may be leaving. What? Fowler may be going to stay on. I thought that might bring you to your senses. Yeah. Now, perhaps you'll stop this stupid nonsense and start behaving like a responsible citizen. But it can't be true. It can be. It is. I'm not going to stand for it, of course. But I shan't be able to resist unless I have full cooperation from you and Judd. Judd? Why do you think I said that about beating? I have to have another prefect. My God, you are getting sly. Well, you need him too. If Fowler's head of house, you won't be in 22. Oh, God. You're more Judd's friend than I am. I've tried and tried. It's useless. Now, I shouldn't think there's a hope in hell. Well, there must be. Prove your worth for once. Why is Devonish leaving? <sighs> Martineau. Oh, Christ. I hope I can rely on you. The next few weeks are going to be absolutely crucial. We can't afford the slightest hint of scandal. You really are going to have to take a... Take a... Uh, myself in hand. The trouble is, I do so much prefer so doing it with other people, don't you? I don't believe in talking about it. Mm, it's not the impression I've got when we've done it together. I said I don't believe in talking about it. Besides, I think we're a bit old for that sort of thing now. Suppose by whom? It's only a passing phase. All the books say so. You have been reading. Worried, were you? Weren't we all? <sighs> I do make myself clear. Oh, yes. Even if we're not actually grown up, whatever that may mean, we must act like it. Precisely. All right, then, let it be charades. I say, what a ghastly turn up for the book. Hmm. Yes. May I have the binos back now, please? Just do try to be sensible. Thanks. I think perhaps I'll be a spy when I grow up. You couldn't keep a secret for two minutes. You'd be surprised. You can't beat a good public school for learning to conceal your true feelings. What was for house tea today? Toad in the hole. Hell, oh, and I missed it. You don't like toad in the hole. 
Last time you said it was like fried toe jam in flannel. Uh, that's what I said, yes. What I really thought would... I'd make a very good spy, actually. There you are. Yes? Bennett. Where? Have you done your brasses yet? I don't wear brasses. I'm not a horse. Where's your belt? I want to see it. All your webbing and your cap badge. The accoutrements of war are not permitted in the library, I'm afraid. Well, where are they? Why? Don't be silly. Oh, God. Jackapot. Jackapot? What's jackapot? I'm warning you, Bennett. You're always warning me. You're a sort of Ediston light, Fowler. I don't know where you get the energy to keep flashing and flashing. Where's your equipment? Come on. In my cubicle. Come on, then. I'm not having you let down the whole house. It won't be the whole house, Fowler. Juniors aren't in the corner, nor's Judd. Don't mention Judd to me. Judd? Did you say Judd? Hang on a moment. I thought I heard you say Judd. Don't forget to have a word with him. I do have my reputation, you know. You're what? Shh. I'm a school joke. I quite realise that. But I am, don't you think, a respected joke? Because I do at least stick to my principles. If I abandon them now... You I'm... don't care what people think. About me personally, no. But they'll say, that's what we said all along. It was all just a form of showing off. On the contrary, they'll see the means justifying the end. A triumph for real politics. They'll say it was all a fake. They'll think all communists are fakes. So what? They're the people you say have got to go anyway. There are always recruits to be made, even here. I think they'll be profoundly grateful. Sacrificing your integrity for a higher cause. They'll think you're positively noble. It's not what they say about Stalin. Oh, well, Stalin. That man is sweating blood night and day to drag his country into the 20th century and to create a whole new concept of society at the same time. Shh! I can't stand him when people sneer at him. <sighs> I'm going to bed. Are you going to join the fight against Fowler? I don't know. I hate him so much. It's difficult to think clearly. Yeah, you're on the right lines, anyway. Judgments must be objective, Guy. The objective fact in this case is Fowler is absolutely objectionable. Please, Tommy. If you appeal to me as your friend, I'll never forgive you. Mingy's tried that. Yeah. I don't mind it from him. He isn't a friend. Thanks. I need time. Well, there isn't much. Oh, God, and I shall be in a rage all day tomorrow, too. Why? Oh, <sighs> jackapots. Militarism from twelve to half past four. Little Hagues and Frenches strutting about. Farcical in his pathetic uniform. God. If I lose this jackapot, will you agree to be a prefect? <laughs> if you lose this jackapot, you'll probably not be a prefect yourself. I'm going to bed. Good night. I could do it, you know. I don't approve of quixotic gestures, however generous. Realism, Guy. Realism. Good night. I do wish you'd sit down, Fowler. Thank you. I prefer not. Well, stand easy, for God's sake. I never want to stand again. I've had a nail in my boot all day. You were almost as bad as Bennett. What's that supposed to mean? Slopping about when you were supposed to be marching. Fowler, it's all over. I asked for bags of swank, and what did I get? A platoon sergeant like a pregnant penguin. If I wasn't so shagged, I'd punch you in the face. Please, this isn't a barrack room. It's your fault. I'm sure. But you don't seem to care. We've lost a pot we've held for the last three years, and you just don't care. No. You're a disgrace to the school. Come in. Did you want me? Fowler's asked permission to beat you. General attitude or something special this time. Filthy webbing, brasso on your cap badge, creases in your trousers. I thought we were supposed to have creases in our trousers. Not like that. Oh, I'm sorry. When I put them under the mattress last night, I must have got them the wrong way round. I warned you. I told you to do everything again. I did do everything again. You made it worse, I'm then. I'm afraid so. 
What? I'm afraid I made it all worse, like you said. He did it deliberately. I'm hopeless with Brasso. I can only ever get a really good shine on my nails. Look. Let me see your belt. You want me to undress in front of all these people? Give it here. Must I, Barclay? <sighs> well, all right, then. I reckon that's worth a full six strokes. Thank you. Why did you do it, Bennett? Do what? You lost us the pot. Oh, surely not just me, not all on my own. You were far and away the worst-dressed soldier on parade. I'm not a soldier, I'm a schoolboy. So are you. Oh, come on, Barclay, let's get it over with. Six. Mingus? I think he was extraordinarily scruffy, even by his own low standards. And I thought you were my friend. But unless we can prove it was deliberate... Well, it'll look as though we're picking on one person for what was, let's face it, a pretty dreadful performance all round. But it was deliberate. He just admitted it. I most certainly did not. People have often been beaten in this house for dirty boots. Not recently, thank God. Uh, Delahaye? I think it's all piffle. He ought to get six. Look at his belt. May I? Oh, Bennett. I deny it absolutely. All right. You can go ahead, Fowler. About time. Four strokes. Four? Six. Oh, all right. Six, then. Come on, Bennett. Into hall. I appeal to 22. <sighs> it's my right. It won't do you any good. It's still my right. All right. If you insist. Sorry, Fowler, Mingus. If you let him off. We won't. This is very silly, you know. It won't make any difference. I just thought you ought to know. If one stroke of Fowler's K lands on my ass, I shall go straight to Farskill and tell him the names of everyone I've done it with in the last three years, that's all. You wouldn't dare. Try me. You can't do this, Bennett. I shall begin at the top. Can I go now? No, you certainly cannot. Of all the filthy, dirty, uh, blackmail... Self-preservation, I call it. You bloody little... Tart. You never thought it bloody at the time. God, I'll thrash you myself. It's only cheating, Delahaye. No need to get so excited. I don't cheat. You do deliberate fouls all the time. I don't know what you're talking about. Come on. We all know what goes on in the scrum when you think the ref's not looking. And cricket... That's got nothing to do with it. All you great games players cheat the whole time because you know perfectly well you can get away with it far more often than not. You're not getting away with this. I think I am. It's only a game, Delahaye. Aren't sportsmen supposed to be good losers? Wharton. Yes, Fowler? Aren't you supposed to be umpiring? No. Scoring, then? Not till half past. Well, you've only got 12 minutes. You know what I really hate about cricket? It's such a damn good game. Oh, Judd's paradox. Wharton, you're reading. Is this wise? Only wisdom. How many batsmen, beginning with P, opened for Somerset between 1890 and 1914? Seven. Right. How on earth do you know? I wasted my youth on wisdom. Ah, there he is. Look, on his way to school shop. Don't wave. You're drawing attention to yourself again. And he's not waving back. Of course not. Well, you should learn from his discretion. Wait, you'll see. When he gets to the trees... There. Congratulations. Love makes such a difference, you know. No feelings of guilt or shame, no sense of dirty little secrets. You feel right somehow. How oh, nice. Or in your case, left. Oh, good shot. By the way, I've decided that the greatest happiness of the greatest number will be best served if I do become a prefect. Oh, Tommy! Oh, get off. On the terms set forth by Mingy's. But with one extra condition, I won't take house prayers. Oh, he won't care about that. My decision, I think you should know, has nothing whatever to do with your belt and trousers. <laughs> I think you are very silly. You should either refuse to have anything to do with the corps or play along with it. You've made yourself enemies. Oh, who cares? You won't get far in the foreign office if you can't be a bit more diplomatic. The foul fiend Fowler felled at last. God, <laughs> Tommy, I love you! Let's go and tell Mingus. I'll tell Mingus you stay here. I don't want you butting in while I'm conducting my negotiations. He'll be thrilled. Thrilled as I am. Oh, don't be so emotional. It's a purely logical decision. Wharton? Yes? 
Would you like to earn yourself an ice cream? Wouldn't mind. If you go to school shop, you'll find someone from Longford's there. Harcourt, you know him. By sight. Give him this. Here's a tanner. Huh. All right, then a bob. Why are you so keen on Harcourt? If you really don't know, I'm certainly not going to tell you. I was looking at him in chapel this morning. He was yawning the whole way through the service. Too many late nights, I expect. What do you mean? And never you mind. Well, hurry up, we'll miss him. Oh, I'm in next. I told Spongin a thousand times not to follow balls outside the off stump. What does that make it? 82 for three. Not too bad, Devonish. No one much to come, though. Bennett just slogs and Bartley. Well, look at the way he's walking in. He's lost his form completely. Are you surprised? Yes, well, look, I, I'm awfully sorry about all this, but quite frankly, when my father asked me what it was I was staying on for, well, it was damn difficult to say. You could be in first 11 next year. It's a long time to wait just on the off chance. The Colts wicket keep is just as good as I am anyway. And you and Bennett will be running the house, not me. There! What did I tell you? Barkley out, first ball. Oh, you better go and get your pads on. Mingies! Mingies, read this. What is it? Now I've got him. He can't get away this time. Where did you get this? Bennett gave Warden a shilling to give it to Harcourt. I knew something was up. Warden was supposed to be scoring, and I caught him sneaking off to school shop. I'm showing this to Barkley. What on earth's all that about? Devonish, do you think it would make any difference to your attitude and to your father's attitude if you told him you were going to be in 22 next year? This time, I couldn't use it. I don't see why not. Because. Because what? Because James has two more years here. And if I'd gone to fast school, they'd have reported him too. So what? I couldn't do that. I love him. Guy, you still don't believe me, do you? I think you may think you're in love with him. Look. I'm not going to pretend any more. I'm sick of pretending. I'm... I am never going to love women. Don't be ridiculous. It's why Martineau killed himself. He'd known since he was ten. He told me. I didn't know. Well, I wasn't sure. Till James. You can't possibly know a thing like that at ten. Or now. Oh, yes, you can. It doesn't come as any great revelation. It's more like admitting to yourself what you've always known. Owning up to yourself. It's a great relief in, in some ways. All this acting up, making a joke of it, even to myself. It was only a way of trying to pretend it wasn't true, but it is. Of course it's not. Tommy, when you come down to it, it's as simple as knowing whether or not you like spinach. I can never make up my mind about spinach. Then perhaps you're ambidextrous. No, I am not. You see, you know. You can't trust intuitions like that. What else is there? Are you a communist because you read Karl Marx? No. You read Karl Marx because you know you are a communist. Well, I'm very sorry. Thanks, if that's how friends react. Well, what do you want me to do, get a horse whip? Not after Delahaye, thanks. Why Delahaye? Barclay lost his nerve and Delahaye has a very whippy wrist. I apologise. You're quite right. It was patronising and unforgivable. But you couldn't help it, could you? In your heart of hearts, like Barclay and Delahaye and Mingus, in spite of your talk about equality and fraternity, you really believe that some people are better than others because of the way they make love. There's complete sexual freedom in Russia. That's not a lot of comfort at the moment, actually. Martineau killed himself because he simply couldn't face a lifetime of that. But you said it was a great relief. No. Don't you ever listen! I said in some ways. It's also a life sentence. 
Poor Martineau. He was just the sort of pathetic dope who'd have got caught all the time, spent his life in prison, being sent down every few months by magistrates called Barclay and Delahaye. I'm sorry, but I don't see how you can be so sure about because it. Because I love him. Come on! You've never been in love. You don't understand. Everything seems different. Everything seems possible. Oh, don't cluck at me, Tommy. You don't know what I'm talking about. We've been meeting every night. In Gridley Field Pavilion. We don't just... Well, actually, we don't more often than we do. We just hold each other. And talk, or not talk, till dawn last night. Maintaining ecstasy. Is he getting beaten too? No. He never got the note. They couldn't pin anything on him. And after Martineau and Robbins, Barclay doesn't want anyone in Longford's even suspecting. I understand all about Martineau now. He was in love with Robbins, but Robbins wasn't with him. Don't let your imagination run away with you. <laughs> For Robbins, it was just a game. Assignation. Excitement, hands fumbling with buttons in the dark, all perfectly normal. School practice. But then poor Martineau, he went and told him, and Robbins was revolted, disgusted. He shoved him away. That's not what he'd come here for. And Martineau knocked something over, and Nickers came in to see what was happening. And yes. Robbins furiously buttoning, Martineau sobbing and sobbing with his trousers down. Think of that for a lifetime. Think of the names. Pansy, Nancy, Fairy, Fruit, Brown Nose. Do I detect just a touch of self-pity? Probably. Fight it. Every time someone calls you a name, thump him. Thanks, and spend my whole life locked up. But the suffragettes didn't get the vote by whining. Suffragettes? You have to change the fundamental social attitudes, Guy. You have to make people see. It always comes down to that. It does with you. Philip, you're both here. Oh. I've got some news. It was very generous of you, Judd, to offer to be a prefect, but it won't be necessary now. Yeah. You can keep your principles untarnished. But Devonish is staying on, after all. I never really wanted to leave. Sarah and Sester won't be that much fun. What? I'm sure you're both delighted. No more Fowler. But I have a disappointment for you, Bennett. Though it can hardly come as a surprise after recent events. Devonish is going to be my number two. What? You bastard! You really gave me no choice, Doug. Don't you dare call me by my Christian name again. Ever. I understand your feeling. I'm sorry, but there it is. I'm sure I can still count on your cooperation as an ordinary prefect. You were easily bought, Devonish. Well, my father was in 22 himself when I told no, him... No, and your son the... will be in 22, I'm sure. And your son's son, even unto the end of the school. Look, we've saved the house from Fowler. We've saved your conscience. Oh, and... yes, all problems solved. For life. No commies and no queers. You really have no right to take that line, you know. You sanctimonious little... Oh, don't let's quarrel. We're all going to have to live together. Let's try and do it as amicably as possible. Well, I thought you should be the first to know. Perhaps we'll get a better reception from Farkas and Donald. Oh, so it's Donald now, is it? Come on. Sorry. Now they say you really wanted to be a prefect all the time, but they managed to stop you. I took that risk into account. Did you? Honestly? Of course. All actions can have various possible consequences. You have to look at things objectively, Guy. Did you see the way they looked at me? Did you see? Like a piece of snot. So much for personal relations as the basis of civilised life. You know when Delahaye was beating me? I could see in his face. He was trying to flog me out of his memory. He won't succeed, though. I'll haunt the whole bloody lot of them. Well, that won't do you much good. Well, what will? Objectively. It's not much of a prospect, is it? It's not the end of the world. Isn't it? When people like Mingus run the world, and you want to be ambassador in Paris. Oh, Bennett? Oh, nice enough chap. Quite amusing, actually. We had high hopes for him once, but... Oh, you heard. Not quite one of us. Bogota, do you think? Perhaps not, no. Isn't Haiti coming up? 
That's about his mark. He was never in 22, you know. Only ever a house prefect. There's no reason you have to be any kind of prefect at all. Yes, there is. If I'm spending the rest of my life hiding my true nature from the rest of the world, I'm taking every comfort that's going while it is going. You can't have things both ways, Guy. What do you want me to do? March about the streets shouting slogans with you? I wouldn't get past the first pub. Either you accept the system or you try to change it. There's no alternative. Why not? Why not both? Pretend to do one while you really do the other. Fool the swine. Play along with them. Let them think what they like. Let them despise you. But all the time... Don't talk drivel. I'd have the last laugh. I'd be revenge. That's just romantic twaddle. You wouldn't be in the mess you are now if you had any discretion at all. What better cover... For a secret agent than apparent total indiscretion. How? <laughs> Bastard. Well, if you won't defend yourself in a logical manner. I'll get him. I'll get him somehow. Wouldn't it be wonderful if Das Kapital was true? It is true. Heaven on Earth? No. Earth on Earth. A just Earth. My trouble is, I prefer love to justice. That's pure Vaughan Cunningham. It sounds tremendous. It doesn't mean a thing. Here. Read it. In Another Country by Julian Mitchell, Bennett was played by Ben Wrighton, Judd by Tom Hiddleston, Mingus, William Ellis, Fowler, Paul Richard Biggin, Delahaye, Joseph Klosker, Devonish, Stephen Webb, Barclay, Dan Starkey, and Wharton by Josh Freeborn. The part of Vaughan Cunningham was played by Adam Godley. Another Country was directed by Mark Beebe. And our betrayal season of stage plays continues next week with David Hare's drama Plenty. It's set after the war in a Britain trying to come to terms with changing values and the loss of empire. All this is mirrored through 20 years in the life of a woman who helped the French resistance, only to find her post-war role a struggle in comparison. I do think to be merely your husband's wife is demeaning for a woman of any integrity at all. I understand. But I find, for the first time in my husband's career, I'm beginning to feel some need to intervene. If Brock is not promoted in the next six days, I am intending to shoot myself. Miranda Richardson stars in this powerful portrait of Disillusionment, a play that was originally staged at the National Theatre. And the Globe Theatre's John Dove directs, and there's a guest appearance from Geoffrey Palmer, in Betrayal, Plenty, by David Hare, our 90-minute Saturday play, next week at 2.30. On Loose Ends later this evening at 6.15, there'll be no coups and no bungs, apparently. Just Ned Sharon with the actors Leslie Phillips and Alicia Witt and the historian Bethany Hughes. There'll be a meeting of comedians as Tim Minchin talks to Harry Hill and Milton Jones provides the laughs. That's in Loose Ends at a quarter past six this evening. BBC Radio 4, the news at four o'clock. Doctors' leaders have expressed concern about reports that Gordon Brown could reduce the part played by politicians in the management of the NHS if he becomes Prime Minister. Mr Brown is said to want to hand over the running of the health service to an independent board, with ministers restricting their role to setting the budget and overall strategy. 
Iraqi police say at least 30 people have been killed in a bomb attack in Sadr city, the mainly Shiite district of Baghdad. Most of the victims were women queuing for cooking fuel to use throughout the holy Muslim month of Ramadan.